am I am YouTube uh, streaming this live as well. So people, if they uh, just go to my site and they don't want to, you know, join Zoom or whatever, they can't um, interact. But what they are able to do is just at least you know watch it and maybe get a few tips from that. So um, just something I'm trying with with YouTube as I play around with this new stuff that I got. So. What did you get? Mm. Um, well, here I'll, before we get, we'll get started here very shortly here, get a few other people. Um, so basically, let's see here if this works. What I, if I were to, this is my, I've got, you know, the lights, the green screen. Oh, yeah. Um, this is my eCam. So actually, you can see the uh, label, the, oops. The routing, whoops, that's not supposed to be there. Um, <laughs> there it is. Well, oh, wow. Yeah, my virtual routing. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's new software that um, allows me to, you know, put myself here in the corner and, you know, all kinds of different things and integrate with my stream deck here. And I even, uh, they just oh, came yeah. out with a, with a foot pedal, so now I can control things with my feet. You know, it's just fun. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see how well I do here. <laughs> this will be this. This will be the test here. Um, Good job coordinating it all. It's um, taken me a while. If you were to watch some of my first ones, and I'm still learning, but I I thoroughly enjoy it. It's fun for me, and um, you know I think it adds a nice little touch to it because when I go to the Mac, I mean it. it yeah, I, it's it's fun for me, and it's so much easier. So I just, um, I just, my process. I was just telling Beth, my wife, that my my process, the way that it's worked for years, is I would create a video, then I would edit it, then I would annotate it, then I would submit it to something for transcriptions, um, or I'd export it out, and then I'd upload it to Vimeo. Then you know, so there's a lot of little steps in there, and with this new stuff that I got, basically this is recording it. And I will dump it into Final Cut Pro, or I can dump it into my iPad. I found um, Loomer, Loomer something that I can edit my videos on the iPad now, which is great. And then once I'm done with that, I export it out to a Dropbox account that I have. That Dropbox account syncs with Vimeo, so it automatically uploads into Vimeo. And it also syncs with a new transcription software that I found that at works on the iPad again. Um, and it automatically creates my transcriptions for me, so then I can upload them into uh, Vimeo and have uh, subtitles. So it, it basically cut my steps down in half. <laughs> That's half? <laughs> but, um, you know, it's still, I'm still wrapping my head around it and, you know, figuring it all out. So, you know, but all right. Well, you will get, uh, we'll get started here. Let me clear up my windows here a little bit. Otherwise, uh, I look at myself too much there and I get confused. Okay, <laughs> so um, welcome to, so here's where I hit my fancy buttons and everything should go. Um, welcome to my keynote, my class on keynote for the Mac. Um, keynote is a pretty powerful program. And for those uh, that have used PowerPoint, I, th I think keynote is far better. I'm actually going to start sharing my screen here. A little, so we get a little better quality. Um, and let's see here, where is it? I need to share screen before we get started. This is where things can mess up. So what's happened? Why reason why I have to sh switch my screen here is because Zoom. I mentioned this a few months ago, or actually about a month ago. What Zoom did is, um, if you're just doing face, uh, you know, Zoom calls or whatever, they limit it to 360 DPI. So it's very low res. So when I show my screen, you can't you can't read anything off of the screen because it's such a low res. So um, I am a paying member of Zoom, not a high paying member. So they bumped it up to 720. This was new in December. They just got overwhelmed with COVID and everything else. So um, they just bumped everybody down. So um, the way that you get around that is by sharing your screen. Um, and that's what I'm doing now is I'm actually sharing my screen. And when you do that, it actually goes at a much higher res um, 
but the frame rate is a little bit slower. So in some cases, you may see a little, the frame rate is just a little bit slower, but that's because it's, you know, you're getting the, the detail there. So it's right. either, you, right. either you, I can have poor quality and it's smooth like silk, like you're in a movie theater. It's just going to be like the old standard definition, um, or I can have a little higher quality or a lot higher quality, but every once in a while it's going to, you know, jerk around a little bit. So I opted for the for the latter. And hopefully what Zoom is doing is they're going to get this figured out. Um, YouTube and everybody else really don't have, they don't really have this problem. It's, it's a more of a Zoom thing. So anyway, that's why I have to share my screen in the high detail like this. And uh, the, the detail there. So it's yep. Uh-oh, we're getting mute. So let, um, I'm going to mute everyone. And... Has anyone noticed that Okay. Your, your speech is off from your video. Is it is it off? Okay. Yeah, Let's, um, let me try something here. How about now? Is that any better? No, Can no, so no? About, the same. about the same. All right. Um, this is the problem that I had earlier. We might just have to. The video is going to be fine. This is that whole zoom factor kind of thing, and. Um, like I was mentioning earlier, those virtual audio cables and all that, apparently I have a couple of cables crossed. But most of the time you won't see me in this big thing, so it shouldn't be a problem. But Not terrible. It's fine. Yeah. Um, and I'll work on that. Like I said, I knew that something wasn't quite right just before I started this, and I tried to do a test and it didn't go. Anyway, let's get started. So what we are going to cover here is... Um, we're going to take a look at the interface to Keynote on the Mac. We're going to see how we can work with slides, adding subjects to slide, objects to slides, transitions, build in, build out, um, and then presenter notes and a few other little things. We've got a lot to cover, but it's actually pretty simple how Keynote works. So uh, let's get uh, going with a little bit about me. I am the owner, trainer, Everything with Dan's tutorials. I am a former Apple genius, and uh, I have been in the publishing industry for about 30 years, magazine publishing primarily, although for the last decade now it's been um, online. And I also help out at a local school. It's probably about a mile and a half away from here, and uh, we have over 1,000 Macs and iPads, and uh, I work there about 12 hours a week um, helping out the other two people that I work with. And um, the other two people that I work with were also Apple geniuses, so I worked with them over at Apple. So it kind of brings uh, part of the old team back, which is kind of nice. So I have a lot of experience with Apple, basically, as you can, as you can imagine. So uh, before we get started, oops, we already talked about me. We don't need that twice. Um, how it works. So I muted everyone, and um, if you have a question, you can unmute yourself. Um, please, if, you, if it's a question per pertaining to the topic, that's great. I'm, I, I'd like to have a little bit of an open forum with that. But if it's not pertaining to the topic, wait till the end. I do have a Q&A at the end, and then um, you can ask it there. So that will help move this along just a little bit. Um, it is being recorded, and you will be able to watch it on my site. Members will be able to watch it on my site at a later date. It will have chapter markers at the different sections and topics and things like that. So, yeah, how long are you planning to go? Um, how long is this going to be? About how long? I'm hoping hour, hour and a half at the most. Thank you very so, much. yep. So let's uh, take a look. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a sample presentation, um, so you can kind of get an idea of it. It's about I think it's about 10 slides, and I'm just going to go through it real, real quickly, but I want to explain like what some of the things are, what's happening with Keynote, and then we'll kind of look at that in detail, some of those things in detail. So let's go over to my Mac here, hopefully. There we are. All right, so we're looking at my Mac here, and I'm going to open up a sample Keynote presentation. I actually have it here in my doc, and... We're going to double click it to open it up. So here's Keynote, and I'll take a look at this interface here shortly. We're going to turn this off here. Um, but right now we're just going to play this. As we can see, it's about uh, 15 slides. I can go through it real quick. I'm going to play it on this Mac. Play slideshow. All right. So basically what we're looking... 
we're not looking at the first slide here. I need to select the first slide. When you start a slideshow, you always should select the first slide, which I did not do. Um, so we have a local Tulip Time Festival here in Holland in May. Some of you have heard me talk about this. So I just kind of threw together a little uh, slideshow showing some of the highlights or you know things like that because it's a, it's a good way of showing how this thing can work. So basically what we're looking at here is the first slide. This is based off of a theme. So when we're looking at this slide, you're going to see that some of the slides look a little bit different, but it's all part of the same theme. So... There's a transition, so it just flipped around. So, you know, we have transitions between slides. These slides can contain different objects. So when we're looking at this, this text here is one object, this image here is another object, and the text up here is another object. I'm going to go to the next one. Another transition there. So in addition to those transitions between the slides, pretty simple, um, we can also have build-ins. So what's going to happen here is I have a number of bullets, bullet points that I would talk about on Tulip Time, and they're going to come in one by one. And this is what we call a build-in. So there's the first one. We have parades and Dutch dancing in the streets. So I'm basically hitting the space bar or the right arrow to advance my presentation. But what it's doing is it's bringing those in one by one. In addition to these build-ins, I could also build them out. So I could have them leave one by one as well. I'm not going to do that here, but that's basically, you know, you have your transitions between the slides, and then you have your build-ins and build-outs with the objects. Now, speaking of the objects, I have an image here. I have some text here. We can have all types of objects. This next one here is going to be a table. Think of a spreadsheet. So basically what I'm doing is I'm bringing each one of these rows in. This is a build-in again. I'm building this in, this table in. But basically when uh, this object here is just a real simple spreadsheet. With tables and rows. We can also have charts. So this is a build-in again. And I'm building it in by day. How many events we have per day. And it's just building in via this chart, chart being another object. So each one of those is called a build-in. And again, I could build it out if I wanted to as well, but I just go straight to the transition. We also have animation. So here's a map of the United States, and there's where I'm located, the little star that came through, and you fly in to Grand Rapids, but you know, just a nice little animation there. So you can even include animations. On top of that, you can include movies. So this here is a movie that I created, and we can see it's just coming in slowly here. There's Beth, my wife. We also have live cameras now. This is relatively new, or in the new in the last six months, I believe. So there's a live picture of me. It's just connected up to the camera on my computer, my MacBook Air. And um, so now you can incorporate live, live video into a presentation as well. These are just photos that I put in there. And this is the clothesline transition. So you have a number of different transitions. And then the last thing here, get through these here. This last one here is uh, something that's been around for a long time. It's called the magic move. And basically what you're able to do is transition between two different slide, two different slides, and anything that is different will move in there. So you saw the logo and the wooden shoes move in. I'll show you when we look at this presentation here. Basically that's two different slides. And I said, put the magic move in there and it goes through and animates it, you know, whatever is different between those two. So it's a really easy way to animate something using the magic move. So basically that, you know, you, as you can see, there's quite a bit there. You can do quite a bit with it. And when you break it down into those different things, you have your slides, you have your um, objects that go onto the slide, you have your transitions happen between the slides, and then you have your build-ins and build-outs. Those are for the objects that are on the slide. That's really all that is in, it takes to build a slideshow in Keynote. Now, obviously, you can do more. You can add background audio and, little, you know, there are, there are little things like that. But for the most part, that is how Keynote works.
And did you actually construct the chart uh, from a charting function? I'll show you. Yeah, that's really easy to do, really simple to do in, um, in Kino. So we'll talk about that when we talk about objects. Yep, I did. So that's a look at a, at a presentation. Um, now let's take a look at the interface to Keynote. So I'm going to go back over to my Mac here. And we're looking at the interface here. Essentially what we have here is our slides on the left side. When we select a slide, let's go ahead and select this slide here. We have all the objects on it. I was talking about the different objects. So here's my image. Here's my text. And you can see it highlighting as I'm selecting it here. And here's my festival features. So these are all the different objects on them. To change this view, you just go up under view here. And here's my navigator. I can view my slides as a um, thumbnails if I like. I prefer to have them as navigator. But if you just need to reorganize them, you can just drag them around to rearrange your slides. Um, you can easily go into that thumbnail view and, and view them that way. And then to show your object list. This is a little bit hidden. It's off by default, but I love this object list. If I hide that, you know, I can't really see. I don't really know what objects are on here. I can kind of look, but when you view your object list here, now you can actually see everything in there. Across the top, we can add our different slides. Each slide is based off of a theme, and each theme has different types of slides. Oops, I forgot to enable transcriptions. Okay, thank you. So this slide here has a title at the top. This slide here has titles and bullets. And the whole idea behind using these templates is it makes your slideshow, your presentation consistent, which is what we like. We want to have everything consistent. It's like a magazine or anything else, you know, consistency is good. So basically, if I were to choose a different theme, I'd have different elements in here. But if I want to have bullets, they're all going to look relatively the same. Now, when you choose one of these, it doesn't mean that you are stuck with it. You can go and add your own objects to it, remove objects. This is just a starter kind of thing. Speaking of objects, across the top are where we have all of our objects. So when we talk about tables, charts, text, shapes, anything like that, this is where we, all, where we select them. So if I go to table here, I can select from these different tables. I'll take a closer look at this when we look at uh, objects in detail. So I just select any one of these and it'll add it to that particular chart. We can also add media, movies, photos, um, and our live video, which is where you saw me with my green screen in the back. Where are the themes picked from? What's that? Where are the themes picked from? Theme. Well, the theme, yeah, the, um, the theme will not necessarily, like if I want, the theme doesn't have some of these built in, but let's just say I wanted to add live video to this slide. Basically, let's say I wanted this photo to be gone. I just select it and delete it. And then I go here to my media and I say live video. No, I mean, are there 15 different themes? Or different oh, yeah, there's different themes. Yep, there are. And I'll show you that shortly. Um, we can collaborate with other people, as long as you're using iCloud. And then uh, last thing here is we have format, animate, and document. So basically, when you select something, let's go over to this one here, and I select this text. When I go to format here, what I'm able to do is format that text. I can change the fill, the border, the shadow. I can add a reflection to it. So that's all under style here. But in addition to that, let's say you wanted to change the font size. You want to change the font. You can go over to text here, and now you can change all of that good stuff. Make it bold, italic. You can change the uh, alignment, you know, things like that. And you're going to see you have different, when you click on these things, you have a lot of different options. You just have to click a little bit, but they're all there. So if I wanted to capitalize all this, make it all caps, I could do that. And then you have your arrangement. So when you have multiple objects, think of a deck of cards. You know, how are they on top? You know, if I place one on top of the other, when I move this image here, you know, it's on top of that title. Well, what I can do is I can move this to the back, and then it's behind that, and you can see it's behind the text there. So you can adjust the layering when you have multiple objects. Depending on what you have selected, this format will change. 
So when we go, I have this image selected here. Now I have image formatting. So here's where I can instant alpha, edit the mask. I can adjust the exposure, the saturation. If it was a movie, I'd be able to adjust, you know, change the um, how often it plays or if it loops or anything like that. When we're looking at a slide, I can animate it. So this is where we have our transitions and build-ins and build-outs. So when I click on animate here, you're going to see that this particular slide has a grid. So this is the transition. And if I want to preview it, I can preview it. If I want to change it, I can change it. Close line, well, let's see what that looks like. I just go over to preview here. It previews it. I don't have to select it if I don't want this. I didn't like that one. Let's go to drop, preview it. Yeah, I like that one. All you have to do is just select it. And now that is added in as a transition. We can also have build-ins and build-outs. So that's a transition between our different slides. So when I select an object here, let's go to this one here. So I have this table. Remember how these rows came in one at a time? That's because it's a build-in. When I select this, you're going to see it's a, here's my headers, here's my rows. I can add more. You know, it's just like a, a simple numbers spreadsheet kind of thing. But when we go under animate here, I have build in. So this is a move in, but I could make it whatever I want. You know, I could make it a cube. It comes in as a cube. Yeah, I like that. And now it's uh, coming in as a cube. I can select the direction. Right now it's left to right. I like that. And then the delivery. So these cells are come, or these rows are coming in one by one. Well, that's where this delivery comes into play. If I wanted to come in all at once, now you can see that table comes in all at once. I go back over to row, now it comes in row by row. And when does it come in? It's going to come in when you go down to the build order here on the click. So when you break it down like that, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty simple to, to figure it out. We have our transitions with our slides, and then the objects on those slides, we can have build-ins and build-outs. So if I wanted to add a build-out to this, basically all I do is select it. It's selected. We go over to build-out here, and let's go with uh, disappear. We'll preview it, and it disappear. That's pretty boring. So let's go with um, blinds. There, and it disappears. And I have it just all at once. So now it'll do, it'll do that before we go to the next slide. So we have a build in and we have a build out. We can also add an action to it. And let's say I wanted to blink this to give it a little bit more. There, I'll bounce it. And what it'll do is it'll bounce that to, you know, ma basically make it a little bit more. Um, flashy or something, you know, like that. So you have a number of different um, options here that you can do with animation. But basically what you want to do is just break it down into transitions between slides, build in, build out, actions are with the objects. And then our last option here is for the document. This is for the overall settings of the theme or of the presentation. So if I wanted to change the theme here, I just click on change theme, and now you're going to see I have all these different themes, and I just click on it, and it'll change it. So let's, I'm going to duplicate this because I, I don't want to mess this one up, because when you do change a theme, you want to choose the theme early, because if you change the theme later, it could break some stuff because fonts change. You know, it, it, you know everything, every theme has its own setting. So let's go with... Duplicate here. So this one is called three. Now what I'm able to do is change this theme and not worry about breaking anything. Um, let's go with blueprint here. All I have to do is just choose. It's changing that theme and you can see it moved things around. That's why you have to be a little careful. Choose your theme before, ever, you know, create a few slides, choose your theme, then build out your presentation. Um, but you're going to see that everything changed here. Yeah? The, those changes that you made, did that just affect that one slide? No. 
It affects, you're going to see all the slides here are different. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to change the theme on one slide, I'm going to go back over to my other presentation. Well, here, let's just stick with this one for now. If I want to change it for the one slide, you're going to see I have this slide selected. And then we go over to format because I want to format this slide. Over here, I can change it but I can only change it among the layouts within the current theme. So I can't, you, you can't mix two different themes together. Uh, you could by drag and drop and this, that, and the other, but typically you don't really want to do that. Choose your theme. The whole presentation should be that one theme and then, you know, just kind of build everything out. So the document here, I can also set if I want the presentation to be links, self-plane. So you can make it a self-plane presentation. What is the screen size? And if I want to add audio to it, this is particularly good if you want to make it self-plane. So what it'll do is it'll, you can have a pause between transitions. So let's say it plays a, um, a presents a slide for 10 seconds and then it goes on in the next one. It's just, you know, self-presenting. So when you go self-plane, what you're also able to do is add audio in the background or a narration. If you wanted to narrate it, think of it like you're in a museum and how they have those kiosks. This is a way that they can build those. Basically, they build it all out, add the transitions in there. And when they go to the animation, when it starts, don't have it on click. Have it be automatically after 10 seconds and it'll just automatically go on on its own and you can add a narration to that. So that's basically how you can you know build a, a presentation even for like a kiosk or something like that. So but that's a look at the um, the interface. I'm going to go back over to the other one because I'm just more familiar with that one. And let's see what we have next. I should have this memorized, but I don't. Okay, so now let's look at working with themes. We saw a little bit about that, but basically when you create a new presentation, if I go up to new here, we have all these different presentations and you can see they're all categorized here. And all you have to do, you used to be able to preview these, you can't preview them anymore. But um, basically all you have to do is just select it, <coughs> excuse me, Select it, it creates it, and there's your presentation. I mean, it's all set, ready to go. So it adds one slide here. I just double click in here, and I start typing. I double click in here, and I start typing. Being that, this is this particular theme. Um, I don't know which theme it is, but basically, when I go and add a new slide, it's going to be with that theme. When you add or create a presentation with photos, you're going to see we have this little icon here. This is where you can choose your own photos. So I can just click on this, and now I can go and add this. So it's really easy to... Uh, let's see. Yep, there we go. Put your own photos in here just by clicking on the little, the little icon there um, once you choose your theme. If you want to change the layout, all you have to do is just select the slide. You go over to Format because you're going to format that slide, like I mentioned earlier. And from here, you're able to select, well, I want it to be this one here. Then it's going to just select the one photo in there, the first photo. So you can easily change that theme or that, that uh, the slideshow format, I guess you would say. Um, just by going to the format here. Can you set up a file folder for the photos, only the photos you want to use so it's easier to locate your photos? What I would recommend doing, let's go and add a new slide. What I would recommend doing is, this pulls it from your photos album. I would say create an album here and then put all the photos that you want in that slide in that album. So then all you have to do is just there's all my photos from Pigeon Forge. And now I'm able to just select those photos that pertain to that. So you could create a folder, um, an album in the Photos app 
just for your slideshow, and then you can easily just select from that instead of seeing all of them. That's what I would recommend doing. Mm -hmm. You can also select if they are in a folder. Let's say they're not in your Photos app. You can do that as well by going to Media here, and you're going to see Choose. I'm able to choose from uh, photos that are just in folders. Mm -hmm. um, that's a basic look at how the themes work. Now that we have our theme selected, the next thing is to uh, you know take a look at the size. I'm kind of going, this is the way that I would recommend setting up a slideshow. You have your theme selected. What you want to do next is go and take a look at your document settings. And just make sure that you have the presentation set right and the slide size set right. Pretty simple stuff to do, but you don't want to change this down the road. If you set up your presentation and then all of a sudden um, you're like, oh, you know what, I should have made it widescreen or I should have made it standard. Probably widescreen is what you're going to, most everything is nowadays is widescreen. But um, when you change it after the fact, things can get a little um, wonky. A little, you know, it doesn't necessarily translate that well. So again, you want to set all this stuff up ahead of time. And what are the presentation types? All right, so we have here three different presentation types. So normal. A normal present, when you play it, you hit the space bar, it goes to the next transition. This is the, I would say, the typical probably nine times out of ten um, if not more, these are the presentations that you're used to. It's probably even more than that, 95% of them. You know, somebody clicks a button um, and it goes to the next transition, or they tell someone to click a button and it goes to the next transition. It is based on your pace. That's essentially what I'm doing. When you look at these topics here, that where it says document settings here, that is um, a, this is a keynote slideshow and it's based on my timing. But what you can do is also set it to links only. So what you can do is you can add a text or a button in here. So I could add a shape of a button. And then when it is clicked, have it go to the next slide. So this is where you can make an interactive, but you don't need to, um, it's up to the user watching it. So right now, this presentation, so normal, is where the timing is me. The links only is the timing is based on the person watching it. They're going to click a button. And like I said, it's really easy. Go to the shape, add your button, and then what you can do is under animate, tell it to go to the next slide. Then you have the third one. Whoops. Third one here, self-playing. This one is the timing is based on the presentation itself. So play this slide for 10 seconds. So this thing is one of those that just loop. And you could come to it at any, so this is what I think of with museums where it's not a touch screen. It's just playing in the background, just looping. You walk in and it could be in the middle of a presentation. It could be at the beginning. It could be at the end. It's just looping. And you set the time, you set the frame when you set it up and then that's it. So that's the, that's the difference between them. And think of it as normal as you control the timing. Links only is where the viewer controls the timing. Click a button to go to the next slide. And then the self-playing is where the slideshow itself controls the time. How are those presentation types different than what's the slideshow settings that's right up above it? Um, these, this here, the slideshow yeah. settings. Okay, the automatically play upon open. So these are more for, um, if I were to create a self-playing, what I would want it to do is automatically start playing when I open it up. But you could really have any slideshow. So, you know, if, let's say I create a presentation for you and I would just say automatically play. So all you have to do is just double click it and open and it's gonna go right into presentation mode. So this is for somebody that really doesn't deal with Keynote. You can just give them this presentation. They double click on it. It starts playing and it's done. You, know. um, you also have here the loop. So back on the self plane, what do you want it to do when it's at the end? Well, you want it to loop probably. So you would tell it to loop. And then with the links only, 
if it's sitting idle. So you're at a museum again, and you walk away from it. Well, you don't want to leave that presentation sitting there in the middle of a... So when the next person comes up to it, it's in the middle of a presentation. Let's say you're at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame over in Cleveland, and you're looking at something from, um, you know, uh, Led Zeppelin or uh, Genesis or whatever, and when someone, the person ahead of you walks away, what you want that presentation to do is start over. So then when you walk up to it, it's back at the beginning. So here's where you say, if no one touches it after 15 seconds, start over. So then the next person that walks up to it. So these are really, they're really nice settings, but nine times out of 10, or even probably more, what most people use present use slideshow for is click it themselves. So what they will do is normal, and you don't really worry about these at all. It's it's just you know because those aren't what you use for a normal presentation, but that's what they are. They're for mainly for self playing, you know that kind of thing where you want to put them in a. Um, uh, like we had one at uh, one of the schools I worked at, worked at ten years ago. We had a. IMAX set up in just a little kiosk when someone walked into the school. Um, you know, it's just a self-running presentation just running on it so someone could walk up to it and just watch what's, you know, learn a little bit about the school or, you know, about the art class or whatever we want to put in there. And it's just self-running, you know, kind of thing. So that's where you could use that. But you'd really have to, you know, put that on a computer that no one touches, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, all right. So, so I have a quick question. Yeah. Are Go for there, it. Are there any bones in Keynote from Apple Card? Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. Hi, like HyperCard, you're talking? HyperCard, right. You, know, you could look at um, you could look at the the slot individual slides as I guess HyperCard. You could look at because that's what it was. HyperCard was uh, you know just basically a stack of cards, and then you you know with what what he's talking about is HyperCard is like a precursor to a database for the most part. When Apple first came out, um, there was HyperCard. People loved it, and for very good reasons. It was great, um, but you could you could build. Um, you know, an interactive kind of thing with HyperCard. Well, you could do the same thing here. So, yeah, I would say the bones might be in there because you that's what a, um, I would dare say that is what the links only. You create a button in HyperCard, you put a button on there to go to the next card or go to a specific card. You can do the same thing here. Mm -hmm. You could put three buttons on a slideshow and, you know, this one goes to this slide. Is that me? Oops. That's me. I thought I had my um, focus on. Do not disturb. Um, so uh, basically what you can do with those buttons and say, go to this slide, go to this slide, go to that slide, that kind of thing. So I would say, yeah, it probably does. Or I don't know if it's, a, if it's the bones, but it, uh, it you know, could be. Mm -hmm. All right. Next, we are going to look at working with slides. So now we have it kind of set up. Let's go back over to our presentation here. And as you saw, to add a slide, we just go up to Add Slide. I select which one I want. And that's all there is to it. If I want to change the theme, I go over to Format. And I can change the theme or the layout. I can't actually change the theme. To move them around, I just drag them. So if I want to reorder them, all you have to do is just drag them around. And you can also skip them. So let's say you have a long presentation and you don't have as much time. So what you want to do is take out some of the slides. You don't really want, you don't want to delete them. What you want to do is just hide them. Well, that's where you can skip them. So if I control click on this slide, let's say I don't need this slide right now, I just skip it. You're going to see it's hidden there. It's still there, but when I go and play it, it is not going to show that slide. So it's almost like hiding it. Now you've done the presentation. You need to get back to your longer presentation. You need to unhide it. All you do is just select it. So I have 
it's selected here. You just click on it there a little bit. You can see it's blue. And when I control click, I unskip it. And now it's back to where it was. So now the next time that I play this, it's going to play that slide. So that's basically all there is to working with the slides. Add a new slide. You can change the layout of it. You can change the arrangement of them, move them around, and then you can skip them uh, to make a shorter presentation. All right, what do we have next? Working with master slides. Okay, this one. It's my, it's my mom, sorry about that. Um, okay, so working with master slides. So master slides, what they are is when I go to add the slide here, this is based off of a master slide. And the whole idea with a master slide is if, if you make a change to one of the to a master slide, any slide that you created off of that master slide is going to reflect that change. So it's easier if I probably if I just show you here. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we're gonna go to this one here, and basically I'm just gonna duplicate this. So let's say I'm using the same slide or the same template, same layout here, right? And what I want to do is I want to change this text to white. I think that black is a little hard to read. Well, instead of going to each one of these individually and changing it, what you can do is go to the master slide and change it one time and it's going to change it for all of them. So this is what, what they call a style sheet. And pages, these are um, styles. So I select one of the slides. It doesn't matter which one. And then a couple different ways to do this. I can go to Format here and edit the slide layout. Or what I could do is just go up to View here and edit the slide layout. Doesn't really matter which one. So let's go ahead and select this. Now, here are all the different, when I add a slide, you can see these are all the different types of slides. These are the master slides. So with this one here, I want to make this text white. So I just go over to text, and let's make this white. And when I click on done, watch what happens. All of these are now white. So with a master slide, let's go move this up a little bit. I go to my master slide, edit the layout. Let's go and move this up. And being that it's a lighter color, we're going to change it back over to black. And let's put this up here. Now, when I click on done, we can see it's all there. So this is how I used it on my slide. So this presentation that I'm showing you here, I'm going to show you, um, this is the presentation, a copy of it, this Keynote Mac class. So here are all my slides, right? The green screen is, um, that's why you can see me. But if we look over here on the left, I have Keynote for Mac class up at the top, and it's the orange, and I have my logo here. Logo, dance tutorials up here. These are the two different slides. When I go to add slide, you're going to see I have dance tutorials and I have my topic. So now let's say I think my next class is going to be Keynote for the iPad. So what I want to do is modify, I want to basically modify this and say, well, this is no longer Keynote for the Mac. This is Keynote for the iPad. But you can see I have to change that on 20 different slides, or 19 actually, because the first one has dance tutorials. I could do that, but being that this is a mass, this keynote for the Mac class is on a master slide, when I go over to edit my slide layouts, and I say iPad, click on done. They all say iPad now. And what makes it a master slide? Pardon? What makes it a master slide? When, um, when they're on the master layout. 
So basically what I did here is I went to, I added this to the master layout. So this is not on, you can, I can't even select it. You're going to see I can't select it here. I can select this text because that's on the individual slide. But I cannot select this. It's not allowing me to because it's on the master. So when I go over to my master or edit slide layout, I think they changed the name, um, now I can change it. And anything that uses this particular slide template is going to be changed. You'll notice that, I'm going to exit here, this slide has dance tutorials. When I changed that keynote for the iPad, it didn't change this one here. Why not? That's because this is using a different layout. If I go and change this layout to topic, look what it did. I change it back over to dance tutorials. Now it's back there. So I go and add a slide. Do I want this to pertain to the topic? Sure. It already filled in everything in there. So when I zoom out here, We can see it has my logo, it has um, dance tutorials, it has a keynote, but you know I, I have to go, I didn't make it quite right, I have to go and delete this. But what I could do, so those are on the master slide, that's basically telling me that's on the master slide. So... Where did you make the master slide from? Is it, is it the first slide in the theme always? Uh, no, you can make it whatever. Um, if I, let's see here, yeah, you can see it, where is it? They're in here. There you can see that little blue line. So that text is in there. So essentially what I did, I went new, chose a, I'm just going to choose a basic theme here. And I go over to my slide layout. I shouldn't call it master. It's a slide layout. And then basically all I did is I just delete this. Just delete everything. You know, if you're going to start over, just delete everything. And I went in here and I added a shape, made it orange, and then I added a line. Takes a little bit of time, but you only have to do this once. And let's go with, this is going to be white, so... Stroke, there we go. I want this to be white. And drag it up here so you can see it's white there. We'll just go like that, make it a little bit thicker. And move it up. Okay, so you can you can kind of get the idea of what I'm doing here. And now, and I put, I put everything in there that I want, my logo, all that good stuff. And now when I edit this layout and I create a new slide, look what I have here. I can, I can create these to my heart's content. So basically, yeah, you start with, a, with one of the slide, one of the themes that you like and use some of those elements, or you start with a blank one and use no elements and add your own in there. You can you know, do it however you want to do it. So uh, basically that's, really all I did. Now I want to add that blue background. Okay. So I go back over to edit slide layout. I go to my shape, blue, and let's make this a little bit smaller so we can see it. And we go like that. It is blue. The layering is wrong. So I go over to arrange. I send that to the back. And now Put this right there, yeah, we'll go like that. And now, when I click on done, all of those, because it's all based off of that layout, changed. And what I... Mine, it says somewhere master slide is, I don't see it on where you have, it says slide layout and title. Does it ever say master slide? No, it used to be, I'm sorry, it used to be called master, but um, they changed it. It's now just a slide layout. I, it's, it used to be called master, master slides. Right. Um, so it's, term, I apologize, it's a, it's a terminology change. Um, but when you, choose, when you choose the theme, all of those slides would 
within that theme, those are the master's lines? Mm hmm Yep, and let's let's get away from the master. They're just they're uh, what do they what do they call them? Slide layout. Uh, yeah, slide layout. You know, um, yeah. So here, and let's say I didn't want to have any of those in there. I can I can go and delete these. But you delete it once, and it'll delete from all of them. Uh, yep, it'll delete that um, that layout. Yeah. So you, this is what you do ahead of time. You set this all up ahead of time. Mm -hmm. You would, and then so now, now that I have my slides, let's say I wanted to have um, another one here, and this one is going to be green. So I go and format. This one's going to be green. Um, we can see that this one. Let's call this one green, and we're going to duplicate it again. We'll call this one red. I'm duplicating these these slide layouts. Red. I'm just Command D for duplicating. And now that I have those three in there, when I go to add slide, there they are. Now, if you want to add your like live, do we do we have to have a green screen? Yeah, that that I'm not going to get into that. That's a whole nother animal with the green screen. Um, I got a green screen behind me, and yeah, it's um, that's a whole nother whole nother thing. Um, so I don't want to I want to get into that. So yeah, that's okay. yeah, I have a green screen behind me. Yeah. All right. So that work. If I would say if you, if you're really going to start playing around with with Keynote. Try to hone in on these slides, and and like I said, I shouldn't call them master slides. I'll have to change that. Um, but they're uh, they're key to making a good, consistent, and making it easy. As you saw, I have nineteen slides that say tutor for keen or keynote for class or keynote for the Mac class, and now I need to change it to something else. Well, instead of going in there and changing it for all of those nineteen or twenty slides. I change it once on the layout slide, and everything that uses that particular layout slide, it's all changed on. So um, if you can, I'd say spend a little bit of time on that. That that will make everything a little bit easier down the road. It'll be frustrating at times, but it will make everything easier down the road. So now that we have our slides kind of all set up, the next thing we want to do is add objects to our slide. So this is where we get into the charts and you know things like that. So I have this festival parade here. I'm going to duplicate this. And we're going to just get rid of this. So I want to add a chart to this or a table to it or an object, basically. We'll start out with something simple, text. All I have to do is just click on text. It adds it to the center of the screen. The reason why I say that is if you have a black background, this text is black. You're not going to see it. So by default, when you add text, it adds it to the center of the screen. From here, what I'm able to do is move this object around. And if you show your list here, you can see that object as well. I can change the font size, all that good stuff by going to format. What else do we have? Well, I can add a shape. Shapes are fun. We have a lot of different shapes here. I can add an arrow to it. And again, if I go under format, whoops, I can change the color. Let's go and make this orange. And now we can see it's orange. Let's make it thicker. 14 point. Now it's 14 point. We can see it has a little bit of an opacity to it. I don't know if you can see that or not. But when we go down here, there's opacity. So I want to make this a little brighter. Now we took away some of that opacity. So you have a lot of different options here. And shapes, you have animals, um, all kinds of different things that you could add. So if I was doing something for the school, you know, I would just go and add this. I want to change the color of it. Let's go with um, their maroon. So I go with maroons there. And... Move this around, I can reshape it. I can go and animate it by adding a build in, you know, things like that. So, shapes, media, same kind of thing. I can go and add a photo. This is from the Photos app. 
I can add an image gallery, which is going to um, add like multiple images, movies, web video, YouTube, Vimeo. You put a link in there and it'll play it from YouTube itself. Um, music, live audio or live, I'm sorry, live video. That's where it uses the camera on your, um, on your Mac and then anyone can see you. So you have a lot of different options here. I can add something from my iPhone. I can take a photo from my iPhone and it'll add it directly to my slideshow here, as well as my iPad. We have tables. So let's get into tables here. Tables are like numbers. So here's my table. I have my rows. I have my headers. I can add more by dragging this out. Let's see here, there we go. Oops, by clicking on it. Sorry. So we can add more. And same thing here. If I go to format, I can go and format it. I can, you can see we have table and cell format. So I can go and tell it how many header rows there are. Go over to table here and we can tell it different style. What is the header and footer? How many header and footer rows does it have? What is the outline? So if you're familiar with numbers, you know, basically this is just numbers. I select a cell and now I can go and format that cell. What is the date format, data format, sorry. Um, you know, what is the fill for that? You know, that kind of thing. So it's essentially what you're looking at here is a numbers cell, you know. Um, I believe you can even put formulas in there and you can drag it around just like anything else. So that is the Let's get rid of this thing here. Need to, there we go. Before you get rid of it, how, how did you make it so you drag things in and out? So, how did I make it so what? So that you can slide in and slide out. Oh, okay. So that's a build in, build out. So I have it here. And we go over to animate because that's what I want to do is I want to animate it. And I want to build it in. Well, what's the build in? Let's go and cube it. Yeah, that's We'll go with that one. It just brings it in. Now it's bringing it in all at once, but really what I'd like to do is put it in by row. And now you're gonna see it's bringing it in by row. So you're just doing adding a build in to it. And then if I wanna build out, I go and build out to it. And then when it- uh, So you build the entire spreadsheet? And then it slides yep. In the yep. And you, yeah. And then yeah. So build the entire spreadsheet. Build it how you want. Put your stuff in there. Don't worry about the animation. The animation always comes afterwards. Then you can always animate it afterwards. Um, but you want to get the data in there first. Same thing with charts. I, if I go over here to charts, I can add a chart. So there's my chart, and you're going to see I have my formatting, just like any chart. I have my chart, my axis, my series. So I can go and change the chart style or the font. What's the axis? Um, you know, do I want to add any, uh, uh, where is it, the angles? Do I want to have any steps, um, series? So anyone familiar with charts is going to be familiar with all these terms. And I put in my data. So you're going to see it says here, edit, edit chart data. This is where we go and edit the chart data. So remember I had those parades on there. So I just went in here. And I said, uh, you know, parade one. Actually, this wasn't, this was events. How many events, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, we had Monday, we had this many. Tuesday, we had this. Wednesday. So you just kind of go in there and, and put, in your, put in your data. And you can see you can keep adding more. And... I only had one data in there, and this is the actual events. And you're going to see it's starting to build it out. So, um, well, let's just say we had 12 here. And it just goes and manipulates it. So now I have my chart. I want to change it. I can change it to different styles. We have um, chart type. So if I wanted to make this uh, a line chart, there's my line chart. So now I have my chart built. I want to bring it in. Then you go over to animate, add an effect, and let's go with cube. And background first by series, by set. So now it's going to bring it in by series. 
I only have one series in there, so let's go by set. There it is. You can see it's breaking it up by one by one. And that's all part of that build in, build out. So that's how we work with our objects. The last thing I want to talk about with the objects is if you have more than one object, let's go and add a shape to this. So now I have that. This is on top of, if we look here, this book is on top of my festival parade. Um, what we can do is we can reorder this just by changing this. This is going to change the order. And now you can see that that white line is above because my chart is above. Think of that deck of cards again. My white line is above my book there. So that's how you can easily change you know, the, the layering of it. You can also go over to Arrange here. I find it easiest just to do this. Right. Dan, how is, uh, at, how is action different than building? So actions, action? yeah. So with actions, what we have, right. we go to Animate. What she's talking about here is actions. With actions, what we're able to do is add an effect to it. So what I can do is have that spin. So now when this plays, come on, there it goes, it spins. But it doesn't build in or build out. So it's an action. So it's kind of like in between. You can have it build in, you can apply an action, and then you can have it build out. So what do you want it to do? Flip, you can zoom in, zoom out, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so that's what, that's what actions are. Um, with our slides, or with our, with our builds, we talked about arranging and layering. I'll just show you real quick again. My favorite way, going to these, but you can also go over to Format, Oops, I have to select something. You do have to select something. I didn't have anything selected, so that could be kind of confusing. You go over here and it's like, where's my arrange? Where's my format? Well, you don't have anything selected to arrange. You don't have anything selected to format, so it just doesn't show. So when I select something, now I can arrange it. And from here, we can move it front to back, back one. So with front, back and front, let's go back to that deck of cards. Let's say you have an ace of spades at the top and you want to move it to the bottom. So you have 52 cards. Essentially what you do is you hit back. So if you have 52 objects on your, on your chart or on your slide, it's gonna move it to the very bottom. So this is great if you need something in the background, the very background, just move it straight to the back. It's gonna move it to the very bottom. But now let's say you just wanted to move it down a couple of cards. You have the ace of spades and then you, you want it just one more below it. That's where you go into backward and forward. It just moves it down one at a time. So I have my book selected here. If I go backward, we can see it moved it down one. I go forward, it moved it back up to the top. But when I go back, it moves it down to the bottom. We can also rotate it down here. So that's part of the arrangement tools. Basically, arrange is anything that you can do when you, you know, to move it. All right. What else? Okay, adding transitions. So when we have a transition in here between these slides, we have a few different options, not too many. Um, the first thing you want to do is you want to select the slide. So I have this slide here selected. It does have a transition. Oops, you can't see. There we go. So I have this transition here selected, or this slide. You're going to see down at the very bottom right corner it has a little bit of a blue stripe. That tells me that there's a transition. That's what that indicates. There's a transition on this slide. When I go over to animate here and I say none, that little blue triangle is no longer there. So that's how you can easily see if there's a transition. Now, to, when you add a transition, all you have to do is just select what you want here. So let's go with grid. I can click on preview. It's one of my favorite transitions. So I go grid. And now that's the transition. Once you set that transition, 
you can also set the duration and the direction. So right now that is going from the left. So when I click on preview here, you're going to see it's from the left. Well, I want this one to be from the right. You don't want everything. Let's say you use this transition throughout the whole slideshow. So everything is going to be going to the left. Essentially what you want to do is I think you want to mix it up a little bit. This one's coming from the right. The next one might come from the bottom. And then the next one might come from the top. So you kind of mix it up a little bit. So now this one is going to come from the right. When I preview it, see it's coming from the different direction. So let's go with these here. Actually, we're going to go with the photos here because that's all I have on them. I have multiple effects. We're going to change this to my favorite. Um, let's see here. What the grid. And they're all coming from the left. I don't want them all from the left. I'm going to go with this one from the right. This one's from the top. And this one's from the bottom. So now, when you play this, from the left, from the right, from the top, from the bottom. So you kind of get a little bit of a more random feel to it. Now you'll notice that one of those had a faster transition than the others. In addition to setting what the transition is, you can set the speed. So this transition is set to three seconds. That's why it's just nice and slow, three seconds. But this transition, one of these, there we go, this slide had a transition of one second. That's why it was real quick. So the first one was three, this one was one. So that's, you know, you can adjust the, um, the duration. That's the duration. The last... That particular slide, correct. Yep, yep. And the next thing is, is when do you want it to start? Typically, you're going to have it on, on click because this is my, I'm, I'm setting the timing. I'm the presenter. I'm deciding when I need to go to the next slide. It depends on how much I want to say, if there's questions, you know, that kind of thing. But you can have it be automatic. And then you set when. So let's just go three seconds. So this particular slide here is going to be automatic. I'm not going to do anything. So let's take a look. Play on this Mac. I'm going to hit the space bar here. It goes to that slide. It sits here for three seconds. I have my hands up. It should. There it goes. Now, the next one is an on click. So I, it's not going to do anything as I sit here. But as soon as I hit the space bar, it goes. So you can set it for automatic, which most people don't because you want to be able to control it. This is a photo of uh, the band. You know, you can see the, you know, I could, I could just go on about this. And then somebody could say, well, how many bands are there? Well, there used to be 50 bands. Schools don't have any money anymore. So, you know, we're blah, 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 blah. And, you, you know, we've kind of transitioned to other things. And so you want to be in control of it. So in most cases, it's going to be an on-click. That's transitions. Pretty simple. Um, set the transition and then uh, what uh, the direction, the duration, and when it should go. Should you do it or should it be timed? All right. Um, we talked about build-ins and build-outs. So actually, I'm going to skip right by this one. Yeah. All right. How about... Can you hear me? There is somebody talking. Okay. Sorry, Steve. No problem. Uh, my computer died. I heard the fan go, and all of a sudden, poof. Wow. Wow. Oh. So I'm back. That's good. We're, 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 we're good. Thanks for uh, being patient there. Mm. I, Weird. The joys of live webinar. <laughs> the joy, yes, exactly. <laughs> Where are you? Um, now I need to give me a minute here to get myself back in, back in sync here. Uh, talk. talk amongst yourself here a second. <laughs> Let's see. While you were gone, I took a, a, a uh, unofficial raise of hands to see how many of the attendees had previous experience with Keynote. Oh, I should have asked that. Yeah. More than three, 
More than three quarters of them. Have. Oh, I you know I keynote is a is a great um, it it really is it's 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 great because uh, it can do so much. Um, it uh, I don't know where Learning is. How to, yeah, <laughs> Learning how to adjust the mass the slide layout, which used to be called master slide, is a huge help. Because otherwise, I would just duplicate a slide and then delete the delete information, the information that, I that I didn't want, want and then go from, go there. from there. Right. 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 Yeah, those are those those are little tricks um, that I've that I've learned, uh, you know, from my from my publishing days. Um, duplicate, duplicate, dupl and and the slide layout. Um, which I incorrectly was calling uh, master slides, but um, their slide layout. And because then what you can do, like think of when you're, what's that? You're upside, you're upside down, down you're a PC. Should be. Good now. Good now. Good now. now you're fine. Yep. So with, um, and, okay. So you know, with the label of your master slide is master slide until so you change the, the title of one of them, but you could just call it master slide. You could, you could, but it's it's um you know it's uh, it's a it's an ethnic you know it really you know the master you know even in programming they used you know in program there's master slave, is that really appropriate you know kind of thing? Um, so it's just a holdover from terminology yeah. that you know maybe we should move away from, so. Mm -hmm. yeah, but we're using PowerPoint for something not political. Right, right. Yeah, it's just, I don't, I don't want to go down that road, but yeah. Uh, here yeah. Um, all right, so we're good now, right? Everyone can see and hear and all that good stuff, correct? Thumbs yeah. up. All right. Okay. We only see you. Yep, that's, I only see me too. I see myself three times. I don't want to do that. All right, so let's um, get back to where we were, and where's my computer? Why is that not showing me anything? USB video. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me unplug my computer, plug it back in. And Good luck. turn it off, turn it on. Yep, that's my next thing. Uh, we'll quit and restart. No, it didn't. That's the first thing I checked. Is this thing's plugged in? Um, no, the fan started kicking on, and the rest is history. Um, I don't, I don't know what it was, what it was doing. So. Um, but I can tell you. Let's see here. What was I talking? Have you done the recent uh, 12.2.1 update yet? No, I haven't. Do you mm -hmm. have Bluetooth turned on? Probably. Yeah, because so my trackpad. That, that mm -hmm. was the, uh, the reason for that release, that it was draining people's batteries fast. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Hmm. All right, let's, start, let's get that in there and get my keynote. I didn't want numbers up and running. I want keynote up and running. And I want. Good to know video. Video. Yeah. <laughs> well, Isn't that, this a brand new computer, though? The, the MacBook Air is a brand new computer. I'm still using a 16 inch, it's 2019 um, MacBook, um, MacBook Pro, which has really been fantastic. So you're gonna see here, that's not, uh, no, I want a camera, so let's delete that. You're gonna see a little bit behind the scenes here Hi. as I try to rebuild myself here. On a screen, what I want is a camera. There's me, and 
USB video. Nope. You are also showing up in the circle. Yeah. I'm trying to get my uh, computer to show. So, uh, display settings. And well, that. You want the desktop that you want to show. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, where. Can, can, can you see. Uh, can you see the programs on, on the MacBook Air? Yeah, yep, absolutely, yeah, yeah, they're all, they're all right there, so I don't know. Um, Maybe your controller, that hub that you have that you press all those buttons? Um, that is separate from this. This MacBook Air is plugged directly into my computer, and now I'm, uh, oh, there we go. Um, let me try one other thing here. Uh, 